This is shuttle launch control. T minus three hours and holding. We have joined the flight crew of the 51D mission in their quarters, having breakfast now. Mission specialist Ray Seddon. She will operate the American flight echocardiograph on this particular flight. Pilot Don Williams making his first trip into space. Payload specialist Charlie Walker making his second flight into space to operate the electrophoresis machine. Commander Carol Bobko making his second flight into space was the uh, pilot on STS-6. Mission specialist Jeff Hoffman uh, making his first flight into orbit on this particular mission. Dave Griggs, who will occupy the center seat uh, on ascent and reentry. And finally, Senator Jake Garn, a payload specialist, our first uh, congressional observer on the space shuttle program who will also operate a number of medical experiments on this five-day mission. The flight crew now leaving their quarters in the operations and checkout building led by Commander Bob Coe. The remainder of the crew following him out uh, of their quarters located in the operations and checkout building the last member of the flight crew, Senator Jake Garn. Climbing into the uh, elevator that will take them down to the first floor of the ONC building. Other members of the uh, uh, astronaut uh, team. Commander Bobko, first one out of the ONC building, walking down the ramp to take them to an awaiting astronaut van that will take them to the launch pad. Other members of the 51D flight crew following. This uh, is a seven-person crew scheduled uh, to make a five-day mission landing uh, back at Kennedy Space Center on the 17th at about 8.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. Over to vent doors being positioned for launch. Coming up on a go to Discovery's onboard computers to start their automatic launch sequence. T minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers now assuming primary control of critical vehicle functions. Release of pre lift off water and arming of SRB hold down ordinance will occur at the T minus 16 second mark. IMUs go to full inertial at T minus 12 seconds. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10. Nine. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, and we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have SRB ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of mission 51D and the seven member crew of Discovery. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Houston controlling now. Roger roll, Discovery. That uh, 90 degree roll program initiated puts the ship at the uh, proper uh, alignment for flight down the inclination of 28.45 degrees. Throttle step down to 90% as uh, Discovery goes through active load limiting in uh, preparation for max Q. Throttle's now down to 65%.
Houston, 30 cents to LOS. Hawaii, Tigris next in three minutes. Discovery, we've got uh, good TV data coming down now, and uh, we can see you appearing through the uh, overhead windows. Okay, well then, hi everyone.
Discovery Houston, we're with you through Hawaii. Looks like you guys are all relaxed up there. We sure are. Would you please tell Rita though that she forgot to put the Velcro on the bananas? Okay, we'll do that. First time we've let Charlie come upstairs. Houston Discovery. Go ahead. We're rolling the deploy from the beginning. Okay, we're watching. Discovery, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, I've got a procedure for you <clears throat> that will allow us to point the uh, plus the axis of the orbiter at the SINCOM when you're ready to copy. Go ahead. Okay, we'll need to have you uh, go to spec 33 and enable rendezvous nav with an item one. We've already uplinked a uh, target state vector on universal pointing. I'd like you to use uh, target ID 1, that's the orbiting body. Body vector will be pitch 270, yaw equals 0, Omicron 180. Guess what that is? That is yet? Well, we've got a lot of guesses going around. Uh, looks like some very busy, uh, busy flies. Well, as you can see, we're having uh, a lot of fun up here trying to figure out what happens to the human body in zero G. I've been doing a number of space motion sickness studies the last few days, and today the electrodes on my head are to do an electroencephalogram to uh, look at the brain waves and see what effect there is there. Also done electrogastrogram today, which is uh, electrical impulses from my stomach, as well as good old bowel sounds for Bill Thornton. And Dr. Ray Seddon is now looking at my heart with ultrasound to uh, see in sound waves what my heart is doing. And uh, it's a big heart. I've been trying to convince my wife and family of that uh, for years. So we're hopeful that uh, all of these electrodes and wires coming out of me will uh, provide a few pieces of the puzzle for uh, space motion sickness as many people are working on. So it's great to be up here, and I'll now turn you over to uh, Charlie. And electrophoresis in space today. The uh, electrophoresis experiment on 51D is the 
continuous flow electrophoresis system that has flown uh, several times before, including uh, the last time, 41D, last uh, September. This time, uh, I'm doing basically the same thing that was done on that flight. In this chamber, separating sample material that contains hormone substances that we're interested in uh, purifying. That's some ways down the road yet. We're still developing the equipment, and we're still processing hormones that must be tested for Food and Drug Administration approval, and that's some years on down the line. But we're coming along very nicely. Okay, this is a demonstration of the American Flight Echo Experiment that I've been doing on several crew members. Uh, Jeff is my subject here. You can see he's got electrodes on for uh, his EKG, electrocardiogram. He has a belt that's restraining him to the lockers, and I also have a belt around my waist to hold me down. That's one difference that we have in, in zero-G. I'm taking his blood pressure, which is important to, uh, to let us know the resistance uh, uh, to peripheral flow that everyone is looking at. And we do that with just a normal blood pressure cuff and stethoscope. The machine that I'll be moving to is the echo machine. Uh, I have a view of, uh, of Jeff's heart through it. We use uh, a transducer with gel on it to give us good contact with the skin. The transducer itself emits sound waves, and it also picks up the, the echo of the sound waves uh, and produces a picture on the screen for me, and we record that on our videotape recorder. Uh, right now, I'm putting the uh, a transducer on Jeff's chest, uh, I'm looking at the picture that I'm receiving, and what we are trying, what we're trying to do with this experiment is see differences in uh, the size of the heart and its chambers, and the differences in volume that we see throughout the flight. Uh, it's uh, a little bit different uh, in flight than it is on the ground because the heart appears to be in a slightly different uh, position, and so. We have to sort of hunt around for it uh, when we get up here. And I've been able to do this experiment on myself and also on three other crew members while we've been here. And coming up, I think we'll show you a picture of, uh, of the heart as it actually shows up on the screen. The squiggly lines uh, are the, the aorta. This is a two-dimensional picture. The little flapper in the middle is the mitral valve bouncing back and forth. I'm able to put the uh, uh, cursor across any point in that and take a, a sort of a cross section uh, of the heart at that point. Uh, we also uh, put the transducer in a slightly different position and actually look up through the heart and can see all four chambers if we get a really good view. Uh, Jeff has a very good heart to do. He has an athletic, large heart that's been easy for us to, uh, to take good pictures of. Uh, again, this is the heart pumping. Uh, you can see on this picture the uh, left ventricle. And as you can see, this is the echo patch at the heart of America's space program. The spin it. Uh, if you don't hold it down, however, it's rather difficult at zero gravity. So holding it down, you can get the top spun up rather well. Once it's spun up, it'll uh, demonstrate its gyroscopic stability. You see that it won't tumble now when I touch it. It'll just move translationally. And here's the uh, first, uh, probably the last, yo-yo show in space. get it started uh, using centrifugal force and once it does get started and you let go it's, there's enough force generated in it for it to uh, take off with its uh, some magnetic marbles floating around uh, it forms a stable configuration and uh, what I've done now is to break it up into two halves and push the two halves together and uh, watch the interactions as they join up there but they said juggling in space is going to be different it was slightly different than what you see on Earth. This is 
our friend uh, from uh, Days on Earth. Uh, our small plastic flipping mouse, and his nickname, as you may have heard, is Rat Stuff. And we're going to give him a chance to show his stuff in space. Well, he needs to get a good perch on his uh, on his locker face here in order to do his thing. There we go now. The paddle ball behaves uh, quite a lot like it does uh, in 1G, except when you let go. We've been playing with the jacks, and the, the biggest problem is to keep your jacks from uh, floating all over the cabin while you're chasing the ball. The ball bounces the same way it does on Earth, uh, but of course the jacks tumble in every direction if you happen to hit one. Open, open it up and here. see what you got in there. All right. Here comes a tether towards you. Oh, wonderful. You can tell that it's well ballasted out. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, looky there. Some wrist tethers. Just like magic. I have a wrist tether, Mark. Greatest way outs ever. Okay. We did that on purpose, Jerry. That's your handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, I think for grins, I'll go ahead and get a Velcro caddy. Well, I can tell you one thing. These things sure get a little bit... Uh, well, it apparently looks looser in the hot water. I'm sure a lot of it is the viscous water. <laughs> hey, Jerry? Yeah? The safety divers are saying your uh, plus, uh, or your DCM weight is light. And that's why they were thinking of putting some arm weights on you to compensate for it. Okay, well, it doesn't feel like my upper body is the problem. Okay. It might be, but I don't think so. Okay, let's see, we're going to start at the back and come forward. Yes, sir, and then we get down a little bit lower here. All right. And we'll have to hand this thing around several times. Jerry, maybe you ought to hook one of the hooks somewhere so you don't lose the thing while you're winding He's got it tethered. It's already tethered, tethered from the handle to the end effector handrail. Uh, okay. And that might be a note. Yeah. Oh, you already got it underneath. Yeah, you had those held up there so nicely for me, I thought I'd do it. Good, and then I can let go and tether myself here. <laughs>
in the uh, in the latter part part of the fly swatter, I'd just like to uh, reemphasize uh, that we want those windows cut out with uh, rounded corners uh, to relieve the stress. And I I did relay that up to you before. They like that. Okay, I hope you like doing that because we're going to make several more of those. Roger Ray, that looks good uh, to me. In fact, if uh, if anything, it uh, it enhances a feature that we we're looking for. We we wanted to get it as flat as we could, and that looks good. Did you? Uh, is that already stitched with the uh, with the thread from the EVA kit? Yes, it is. That was a uh, mighty fancy needle, uh, but we do have it. Uh, we do have it uh, stitched with uh, the Now that looks, uh, in fact, that looks excellent. Uh, as usual, you've managed to improve on our basic ideas, so it looks really good. We have taken uh, the metal frame here, both notched it, cut off the, the crossbar. And we think that's what you want us to do with it. Okay, that's exactly it, Ray. Now, if you'll, it doesn't look like you've punched the holes in it yet. As you're holding it there, if you will cut the notches in the outside of the aluminum frame. And, uh, okay. That's, that's done. Okay, and match them up with uh, a set of holes on the inside of the ladder. Now, Roger, we can see the notches very clearly. Right here, you want the holes, right? That's affirmative. On the inside edge, uh, the inside window edge there of the, uh, of the ladder, and then use the uh, get some of the 20 gauge wire, cut it to about a six inch length, and use it as a, just like a piece of twister tie through the notch and through the hole. And use the vice grips to, uh, to get a firm twist on it. I have these two fly swatters made up, and uh, this is the original fly swatter, and of course the second one here is the one made with the curtain stays. Uh, and we have uh, a concept here that that Dave's trying to get through. Uh, do you have any comments on these two to start with? Yeah, those two look super, Bo. It's a tribute to the work of a, a fine seamstress there.
that exists is the wire on the lacrosse stick touches the B camera, the trailing uh, end of the B camera past the pivot point. All the other structure of the orbiter is totally clear of the fly swatter and the lacrosse stick and we are rolled in at this time. Okay. Oh. Here we go. And Discovery Houston, you just got a round of applause. Thanks for the work. Okay, attitude the same at position minus 900, minus 100, minus 750. That's right, and we changed that to move it uh, a little bit further aft and a little bit further down to give you a better view out the aft windows and to give you better visual cues for lining up the, the fly swatter with the lever. Okay. Okay, once you're uh, uh, still out there about seven feet away near the poise position, but you think that you've got it lined up, we want you to go to orbiter unloaded mode and move the arm towards the satellite to about uh, a position where the swatter is roughly two feet away from the satellite. Okay, I go in orbiter unloaded to about two feet from the satellite. Right, and that'll be a, a pure Y maneuver in orbiter unloaded. And at that point- I understand. Okay, stop, uh, stop about two feet away 
And there, use your camera again to readjust the height and to readjust X. And uh, you're probably going to need to to look out the window and depend heavily on your on your view out the window as well as on the TV. Things are going to be rotating past the TV, so it'll be a little hard to really get a good uh, a good lineup from the TV. Houston, uh, we'd like to boil some water. We'd like red out temp to high. Red out to high. That's not a great picture you're getting now, but that's thin comb. Okay, tally home. Okay, based on uh, what you've told us and what we can see, uh, the best procedure that we can come up with is to use the fly swatter until all the rungs are gone. Then prior to uh, rolling the RMS to get at the lacrosse stick, we'd like you to hit the lever with a cone. Okay, copy. Houston, the window is closed. Perform the set maneuver. Control Houston at the uh, flight director's uh, questioning the RMU systems officer uh, uh, provides the opinion that there won't be any clearance problem uh, in uh, latching the uh, robot manipulator system and in closing the payload bay doors with the uh, fly swatter and the uh, uh, lacrosse stick uh, secured in place on the end effector.
I know you're doing this to make some educational videotapes for students learning about the laws of physics. That's really the best thing about our space program, the inspiration and challenge that it gives our, our young people. You've been conducting extensive tests on the human body's blood flow and digestion. And I want to ask astronaut physician Ray Set, how are these tests working out? And Ray, I'd also like to commend you on your dexterity in hitting that pin on the side of the satellite. I can, if you don't mind, I could think of a job on a ranch in California that you might be interested in. <laughs> but Senator Garn, I know that you're taking part in the health experiments, and Jake, how are you doing? You, uh, you're doing a fine job up there, but I could use your help down here right now in getting the federal budget under control and arranging assistance for some people fighting for their freedom in Central America, so don't stay up there too long. No, Jake, maybe in a row. Well, Mr. President, I'm doing just great. I've missed you, but I'll be back on Tuesday. I'm well aware of the vote on the Nicaraguan aid on Tuesday night, and I'll be voting in just the way you'd like me to when I get back. <laughs> well, God bless you. And you know, Jake, maybe in around four years or so, uh, you could use your influence with NASA to uh, get a certain retired politician a, a ride on the space shuttle. Uh, well, I just want all of you to know how proud we are of you. Good luck and God be with all of you. Anyone Thank there? you very much, Mr. President. We certainly enjoy being here and I'm sure you realize that we're just the people in space uh, who are the working edge of the great team that's on the ground supporting us. Thanks again. Well, you're a great team up there, and we're all very proud of you. God bless you. Range 8.2 nautical miles, velocity 628 feet per second, altitude 14,000 feet. Discovery now processing the microwave landing system at the Kennedy Space Center. Range 6 nautical miles. Discovery Houston, show you on glide slope, converging to center line, surface wind 090 at 9. Range 5 nautical miles, altitude 7,100 feet, descending at 176 feet per second. Now 4 nautical miles out. Range 2.5 nautical miles, altitude 1,800 feet, now 1,500 feet, 1,200, 1,000 feet, 1 1.5 nautical miles out, 434 feet, 265 feet, 165 feet, 116 feet, 75, 45, gear down and locked. Touchdown. That was gear descending now. Touchdown.
Mission Control, Houston, and a mission elapsed time of six days, 23 hours, 56 minutes. The SWAT team is home. Houston, it looks like Discovery just blew a tire. Houston, we're stopped. Roger, wheel, wheel stop, stop, Oh, and uh, just a note for you, the 51J flight crew expects you uh, in the simulator this afternoon for an orbit skills training session. Houston, the uh, crew departing the orbiter now. Jake Garn uh, and George Abbey, the director of flight crew operations here at the Johnson Space Center, now getting into the Astro van. Pilot Don Williams uh, just entered the Astro van. Uh, 